The vision of the robot race really started with the intersection of health and technology. And so, you know, you have a, a 5K, how can we get people out, running, off the couch, and something that's really attainable, but then also have this, you know, technology component. Oh. On race day, we had 17 robots signed up and we had 23 robots compete. So we had five more robots show up on, on race day. We had you know, small robots, little Lego robots, and then we also had robots as large as a two-seater golf cart that had been retrofitted with uh, some remote control capability. So uh, we had to get some heats with robots that were similar capabilities and similar sizes. Since this is our first year and we had really no idea what to expect, what kind of uh, contenders would be coming out, we decided to set the bar really low to a 100 meter dash for the robots. To enter the race, you had to have a vehicle that's capable of driving down the course. It had to accept a simulated water cup, go around a cone and come back. I was quite skeptical whether or not the robots would be able to actually grab the cup and it was really exciting to see how many great solutions people came up with for that problem. So what are you most excited for about the race? Uh, I mean I guess running alongside it and watching it pick up the cup because that's one of the harder things to do. We built the robot because it came with a kit of parts with the, the first robotics competition. So before the season started, we built that as practice for you know building the real season robot. I think the thing that surprised me most about the robot race was the variety of robots that were entered and the, the different level of capabilities that we saw there. This is our rover that we built last year for the NASA Rascal RoboOps competition. It's basically a tele-op competition where um, the rover gets sent to NASA Johnson Space Center in Texas and we, um, three members go to provide technical support but the rest of the team stays back on campus and we operate it remotely from on campus when it's in Texas and it's really meant for sort of rugged terrain planetary environments um, crawling over rocks and stuff and the mission is to gather various rock samples. It's the first outing with it this year so far yet, so it's the first one in the new chassis. Um, and it's the first one, the first time the new uh, RoboOps team has had a chance to practice operating it. So I was the operator last year. Our competition's in June, so we're sort of working towards that. Our robot is called HydroDog, and it's a pneumatically powered uh, quadruped robot. We have a jumping sequence where it jumps the front and jumps the back to be kind of a uh, uh, Greyhound or rabbit hopping, however you want to think about it. We're not going to go very fast, but it'll be very energetic. Uh, we're all Doctor Who fans, so we decided to build K9 for the robot race. He's an autonomous dog from uh, the show Doctor Who. So how he works is we have two wheelchair motors uh, underneath this big body here um, that drive the system. So that's why he can support uh, the, a person's weight. I think the robot race is really important from a public education point of view. As people were watching the contestants for the robot race, they saw the robot and they think, I can build that. I'm going to try next year. I'm going to come on out and, and see what I can do and, um, and how I fare in the competition. Getting people interested in science, technology, engineering, and obviously math, I think need to be project driven when you can learn something because you're excited about solving a problem, that's effective learning, and that's fun learning. These are things that uh, the robot race, I think, can seed. In the coming years, we plan on making the course more challenging, uh, maybe have to slalom down you know, the course, or there's obstacles that you'll have to avoid, and eventually the idea is that the robots will be competing in the 5K with the people. Um, we're not there yet, uh, but uh, that's the goal. Boston and Massachusetts in general just has a really great and unparalleled robot community. And this is not just with the corporations which are here, which are many. There's a lot of people dabbling and pushing the envelope in, in robotics. And so I feel like this was a great place for us to bring it all together and, um, and pit them against each other.